Among the sectors already in distress from COVID-19 is the local arts community. The city's trying to help with efforts that include an artist relief fund. To tell us what's happening is the mayor's chief of arts and culture, Cara Elliott Ortega. Thank you very much for being with us, Cara. Thank you. First of all, when I say the arts community, uh, I think a lot of our viewers, they know the big organizations and the big venues, but, but what else is there? Oh my gosh, there's so much. There are small organizations all around the city, um, some operated mostly by volunteers or working with contracted artists and other kinds of arts workers, all the way up to our biggest museums, like you mentioned. Um, and I think people also don't know how many people are employed in the arts sector. We have artists, of course, and arts administrators and full-time staff, but there are also thousands of contracted workers who are front of house engineers, sound engineers, ushers, ticket takers, all sorts of other people, hourly workers who are employed by the sector who are also feeling this. And of course you've got these community arts organizations like, like Artists for Humanities. They work with young people mm -hmm. and you know, I guess they have to shut down now too, right? Yeah, everyone is uh, working from home. Events are canceled across the board. Um, it's especially hard for, I think, organizations working with young people who are now on a totally adjusted schedule through BPS and school closures and um, doing learning from home and what does that look like for a lot of creative youth development organizations. And then also for performing arts organizations that really rely on one or two uh, cycles of performances a year, and that's their earned revenue that now they've entirely lost. Now, of course, the arts overlaps with, with other things. These performances take place in particular places. There might be a restaurant around the corner and that's gonna be another ripple effect to consider, isn't it? Yes, I think uh, there are so many adjacent industries in the creative industries. There are venues that are being hurt by this, for sure restaurants that are now mostly closed or just doing delivery. Um, there are gonna be repercussions, financial repercussions, I think going a long time, maybe even after this health crisis has passed. Now that's one of the things that I was thinking about because you know, e even if we get the best possible curve imaginable with the virus, uh, you know, we're gonna feel better at some point, I imagine, those of us who make it through. But on the other hand, uh, you know, we have a recession uh, money for arts programming, and this is the whole country. This, this could be a, a real drought for a while, couldn't it? Yeah, it could be, and I think um, that's one of our biggest concerns right now is making sure that people can make it through this time and trying to help organizations think about what adjustments they need to make during this period in order to still be able to produce programs and hire people and do what they need to do and what they want to do a year from now. Well, take me back to the thinking around the Artists Relief Fund. The city has a fund already, but this has been sort of refocused. Uh, what was the planning involved? Well, we've been working with artists going back to the Boston Creates Plan, which the mayor initiated in 2016, uh, which is the city's first cultural plan, and we reached out to thousands of people across the city, and we heard overwhelmingly from artists that they needed support. Um, that they hadn't been receiving support in the form of grants or recognition from the city and from other funding sources in and around Boston. So as a response to that, we created a suite of resources for artists, including the Artist Resource Desk. We have a person who meets one-on-one -on -one with artists throughout the year, sees over a thousand people a year, and we created this fund called the Opportunity Fund. Um, and we've been doing that now for about three years. Uh, it's a rotating fund all around the year that artists can apply to to take advantage of an opportunity that comes their way, whether that's professional development or sharing a class with the community, um, buying equipment that they need, uh, taking advantage of a show that they need to pay for prints for, whatever it is. So we already had that infrastructure in place, which was really, really important. Um, we had a spring round of funding coming up and we said, you know what, we really need to respond to the need that we're hearing because we are getting uh, inundated with emails and calls. Um, we have, you know, our friends are artists and creatives in the sector. And so we're hearing about how much income people were losing personally, um, sometimes up to half of the income uh, for the year that they would have been making in the next three or four months that now is entirely up in the air. So this was just something that we could do where we could say, we have this funding, we're gonna turn it into the Artist Relief Fund and we're gonna make it available just so that people can try to recuperate some of this lost revenue. I, I imagine what's going through people's heads right now. I mean, I, I know there's an eviction moratorium uh, that the mayor worked out, but on the other hand, people must be thinking, I mean, can, can I still live here a few months from now? Well, I think it's hard. It's an ongoing question. Um, one of the things that we're really interested in is, you know, there's gonna be a period of time where maybe there's a little bit of a new normal when we're all at home and trying to figure out what to do and how to make ends meet. 
And can we even commission artists while they're at home to do things online through live streaming or to work on other kinds of projects that maybe become available once we've gotten through this? Um, but are there other ways that we can create paid opportunities beyond just providing a little bit of relief funding? Because we know that that funding, which we're doing in amounts of $500,000 grants, is not going to make up for everything that people have lost. Well, the way the fund is, is designed, you, you're looking for uh, proposals from artists who can specify something that they can do? No, it's, um, it's more basic than that. We're just looking for artists who have experienced any kind of financial loss due to cancellations of tours or gigs, um, events that have closed or venues that have closed that has had an, a financial impact on them. And they just apply for $500 or $1,000. Um, if they can, they provide a screenshot of an email showing the cancellation or um, a link to something that says that it's been canceled. And then we give them the funds. So this isn't uh, to support a project. It's really direct funding to recuperate a little bit of the, the lost revenue. This is one targeted fund, but there's also a wider effort that's going on between the city, the Boston Foundation, and some other partners. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that, too. So the city just launched um, the Resiliency Fund. Um, this is an effort being led by the mayor, like you said, in partnership with the Boston Foundation and others, um, to really address immediate uh, emergency response. So thinking about how to make sure that young people and older adults have food access, making sure that students at BPS who are now doing remote learning have the technology that they need to do that from home, um, and making sure that our first responders and healthcare workers are supported. And it might be that those priorities change over time as this evolves, but that's really uh, the funding priority right now for that resiliency fund. Uh, what about things, have you heard anything in the families themselves, uh, you know, with, with kids trying to, 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 you know, maybe they've got kids who are very interested in the arts and they don't have that hands-on contact that they have when they were in a school? Yeah, I mean, it's day one um, of the schools being closed, so I think, or pre-day one of the schools being closed. Uh, so I think we're going to see how that evolves over time, and I know BPS is really thinking about how to make things available remotely. Um, and looking to partner potentially with organizations that can provide that kind of digital content. But I think we've even seen, you know, nationally with the, with the internet being available, at, we saw um, a lot of families taking advantage of uh, like online live doodle classes with different artists and with kids authors in particular seem to be doing this right now. So I think there will be a lot of opportunities for people to plug in virtually that way. And it reminds me, if you, you might be a parent, you've got kids driving you crazy because the, this whole thing is driving them crazy and the yeah. arts can be a way to diffuse that too. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like I said, this is going to be a new normal for a while, um, but I, we're going to see people really missing gathering in person and what that means. And we're gonna test the limits of how that works virtually. Um, we also know that even though artists might have lost a lot of um, jobs at this time and are stuck at home, they wanna create and they wanna share what they have uh, with others. And so, um, you know, if anyone is doing virtual streaming of their work, we welcome um, hearing about that, you can always email us at arts at boston.gov and tell us when and where you're going to be doing that or how you're going to be getting that information out. Um, and we would love to put, start to put together a calendar of kind of virtual events so that people can tune in and have the experience of connecting with other people in real time, which I think we're, we're really going to be wanting. Well, you know, there are already uh, people who've done that. Uh, uh, we've, we've seen these videos in places like Italy, Spain, and, and Jamaica Plain. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the importance of that? Well, I think, you know, we, as humans, we want to be together. We want to be creating together and connecting. And I think that the arts are also a really unique way to, um, to express some of the frustrations we might be having. A lot of people are experiencing some distress and anxiety, and sometimes creativity can be a way through that. It can also be a way to celebrate each other. We've seen a lot of people um, who really want to think about their wellness and the wellness of their networks, and if posting videos and different challenges saying, you know, like, let's find a little bit of joy where we can right now and share that with each other. And I think that's part of what creative expression offers us. Of course, when I was also thinking, when I saw a clip, I think it was from Siena in Italy, mm -hmm. and they were singing this thing that they've been singing for centuries there. It reminded me of Boston Strong. Mm -hmm. What's going on with people psychologically when they feel that? Well, I think it's just that instinct for togetherness and for thinking about what it really means to be who we are in this place in this time. I mean, that's all culture is, is a shared understanding of, of what unites us and what we have in common. Um, so I think that we will see more of that and, um, and creative expression together, expressing the things that we have in common when everything else seems to be kind of uncharted territory and full of uncertainty. 
um, will gravitate towards that. We should mention uh, one more time that if people want some more information about the funders, the way they, they can track that down. Yes, yeah, so the information about the Boston Resiliency Fund you can find at boston.gov and the Artist Relief Fund, which we're also accepting donations for through a partnership with Boston Center for the Arts, you can find at boston.gov backslash artist relief.